This is Wickham Sound. Hello everybody, my name's Dane Cobain and you're listening to The Art Show on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. We're on every Tuesday night at 7 till 8pm and this is the show where we talk about the local art scene. We have a different guest on each week and we talk about creativity, music, literature, all that good stuff. This week we're going to be joined by Claire Sherman who is a fellow co-presenter of mine here on Wickham Sound. I've known Claire for a little while now and that's actually how I got into um, you know, doing the show here at Wickham Sound. I'm a guest on her show once a month where I talk about the books that I've been reading. And so I thought I'd return the favour and get her in to talk to us about how she got started in the radio and perhaps how you can follow in her footsteps if that's something that you're interested in. Each week we also share a book, a TV show or movie and an album to keep you guys entertained during quarantine and lockdown. Although obviously measures are slowly but surely slightly lifting at least at the moment fingers crossed that um, we can keep the you know spread of it low and of course we'll be sharing some local music as well as always you can get in touch with me here at the studio by dropping me an email on dane.cobain at wickhamsound.org.uk that's d-a-n-e dot c-o-b-a-i-n at wickhamsound.org.uk and you can also find the art show on facebook if you just give it a, a quick little search now i normally kick off each show by talking about something that's going on in the world or something that's happening um, I think the main thing in my life is that it's my birthday on Thursday, I'll be turning 31. But I didn't think I could really get a discussion going with that, so instead this week I thought we'd talk about a bit of an abstract concept which is the role of artificial intelligence in creativity. It's something that I've been interested in for a while now. I guess I should get started by kind of trying to explain what artificial intelligence is. The basic idea is to create a uh, computer software algorithm that can mimic human intelligence. They're actually sort of different subjects of artificial intelligence. So uh, machine learning is like a quite a popular subset of it in which, you know, uh, machines are, are taught to, to think and to learn essentially. So uh, for example, let's use a cat because my cat is here trying to nuzzle up against me while, while I'm talking to you guys. So basically the difference between the two is that with artificial intelligence you would have to sort of program into the software all of the different features that make a cat a cat whereas with machine learning you would just show an algorithm hundreds of thousands if not millions of pictures of cats and it would work out for itself well okay they all have whiskers and it would uh, identify all these different similarities and uh, machine learning is what sites like Netflix use to power recommendations because you can be kind of super personalized So there are all sorts of different ways to apply it, really. I mean, in terms of uh, creativity, with music, for example, AI and machine learning algorithms are being used to write original music because they can kind of study existing music and imitate the style. There was a a new Rembrandt painting um, that was created using machine learning in which it studied every existing known Rembrandt painting and created an entirely new painting. It was of a a man in some dark colours. That's about all I can remember from it. But it was very cool, you know, to see this use of it. I mean, this idea of creating music with AI, the goal isn't to replace, you know, Rihanna or whoever you want to talk about. You know, AI isn't going to replace rock stars and pop singers anytime soon. But what it can do is create, for example, royalty-free background music for videos. And this just then, you know, enables human creators, human video creators, to kind of unleash a new level of creativity. They have access to more resources and they don't have to pay for it, you know? Uh, It's also being used in sort of financial journalism. So AI and machine learning algorithms can take kind of information coming in from financial tickers and just automatically create financial news stories that scan well enough to be, uh, to be, you know, understood by a human and, and potentially to pass what's known as the Turing test. So that's named after Alan Turing, the kind of visionary mathematician. Uh, He's probably most well known for helping to crack the Enigma code during the Second World War and uh, basically for being persecuted for being homosexual to the point at which he committed suicide. It's kind of a tragic figure really. Um, But Turing was sort of super influential in early computers. One thing that I I read in his um, official biography actually, it's the book that was then turned into the movie The Imitation Game. He wrote an algorithm to play chess and this was before there was any computer to actually power the algorithm. So he basically created a piece of software that could play chess and then had to like manually run through the algorithm himself, crunching all the numbers as a human computer to play this game of chess against the algorithm. But that's like an early example of a a computer program. But yeah, um, Turing came up with something called the Turing test and the idea being that um, if a machine can be in like a conversation with a human and trick the human into thinking that the machine is human, it passes the Turing test. There um, are like further variables, but we we don't really need to go into that here. 
But yeah, I, I just find it's like a fascinating subject. I mean, for another example, I read a book called uh, Down to a Sunless Sea by Martin Lawrence, and he used an AI called Deep Thunder that I think he created. And this AI basically created its own language, a bit like how the Droogs talk in a chocolate orange. A clockwork orange. Sorry, I'm just hungry. And so again, I think it's really cool to see all these ways that AI is actually boosting human creativity. There's a lot of discussion about AI taking jobs away from people, and most of the uh, studies I've seen so far show that AI, you know, it displaces jobs, but it also creates them. So for example, Gartner said by the end of this year, AI will have eliminated 1.8 million jobs, but created 2.3 million. And uh, it's similar to like the industrial revolution, the, the way that we work might change, but we'll always create more work. It's just the nature of the work itself might change. So I don't think we have anything to be scared of from, uh, from AIs when it comes to, you know, creating the arts. Uh, there was a great Neil deGrasse Tyson uh, video where he was talking about astronauts and he was saying, you know, should we still be sending astronauts into space? Financially, it's way cheaper to send robots. It's also safer, you know, there'd be less loss of human life. Uh, but here's the catch, that nobody ever ran a ticker tape parade for a robot, you know? And we want to inspire the next generation of scientists. And uh, a, a robot might help, I guess, especially in science, but, you know, we still need human scientists as well. And the same is true for any form of human endeavor, I think, really. Unless it's just, crunching numbers and doing manually repetitive tasks, in which case, let's let the robots take those, eh? Anyway, we're gonna have a little bit of music now from a local artist, and then we're gonna chat to Claire Sherman about life at Wickham Sound, I guess. So this is local artist Clive Whitelock. He's one half of Occasionally David. We actually had him on as a guest earlier on in the show, and this is his track, The Wanderer. Love talk. Love Wickham Sound. We understand that everyday life is going to become challenging over the next few weeks and months. But we want to reassure you that the Wickham Sound team are here to inspire and entertain you with local, relevant programmes and information. We followed government advice and set our team up to work remotely. We have taken all the steps we can to keep our team safe so we can be here for you. Local businesses. Perhaps you have closed temporarily or have found a new and innovative way of working. If you want to reach customers with your message, get in touch with us today. We can get through this if we all pull together. Please stay at home, stay tuned to Wickham Sound for the latest information and do get in touch with us to let us know how you're doing, if you'd like a song played or just want us to say hello to you. Join me, Keith Bowden, every Friday night at 11 o'clock for all the best party songs around. There's rock and roll, Motown, 
featured artists and much more. Everything for your party. That's the Keith Bowden Party Show, 11 o'clock through till 1, Friday night, right here on Wickham Sound 106.6. This is Wickham Sound. This is Wickham Sound. I was giving it all by Colin Upfield. Earlier on, we listened to The Wanderer by Clive Whitelock. You're listening to The Art Show on Wickham Sound 106.6 FM. I'm your host, Dane Cobain, and I'm going to be joined by Claire Sherman, who is a fellow presenter on Wickham Sound, and we're going to be chatting about how she got into the radio and how you could potentially follow in her footsteps, if that's something you'd be interested in. So over to, uh, over to, to Claire. So the question <laughs> I've been kicking off with for uh, everyone is uh, what was the last book that you read and what did you think of it well um as you well know i'm not a very fast reader <laughs> um and a lot of the books that i read are books for 
my show because yeah, I'm yeah. interviewing the authors. Um, so sometimes they're not always books that I'm necessarily would generally read. Mm -hmm. And actually sometimes I interview people without reading the books. And actually I've done that with photography books as well, mm -hmm. which is a bit weird. So sometimes I have to go on to Google and see if I can find any of the photographs. But the book I'm actually currently reading, and I'm probably about three quarters of the way through, is one called The Storyteller's Child, and it's by Christine Brown. And she actually lives locally. So this is, I, I will be contacting her and seeing if I can get an interview. She lives in, in Buckinghamshire, but it's actually about her family life. She's originally from Edinburgh, right. and her father was Irish, and her mother was Catholic. Um, and it's all about her childhood and interesting bits about uh, class. And um, it, it goes through from the oh, 30s, I think, up to the present day. I haven't got to the present day yet. I think I'm about 1950s at the moment. But it's a it's a really interesting book, and it's a, it's it is a good read. It's not there's nothing dramatic about it. It's just about an ordinary family life, but there of course no no families are ordinary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but it's very well written, and uh, I'm looking forward to speaking to her, which I'm sure I will in the future. But I would I would recommend it actually. Uh, it's called the Storyteller's Child because her father likes telling stories basically and it seems that some of them weren't entirely true uh like he was talking about his childhood in ireland or his time in ireland at a time when he wasn't actually there right yeah, yeah. so yeah so it's i guess families have secrets as well so it's about that too well that's, that's, so, that's reminding me of the quote that um you shouldn't you should never let the truth get in the way of a good story as well exactly <laughs> Exactly. Yes, but I think what he actually was doing was quite interesting. But he, but that was um, he was in um, with the army in India, and I guess he didn't want to talk about that. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Cool. I have to look that mm. up. And and so you said you're hoping to uh, talk to her on uh, your show. So I mean, mm. that's 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 the main thing I want to talk about, really. I mean, maybe could you get us started with uh, telling us a little bit a little bit about your show on Wickham Sound? Right. Well. Currently, I'm doing the afternoon show on Wednesdays, which is music and chat, basically, like like all of the afternoon shows. Um, and I try to get guests on, which actually, in a way, with um, lockdown, mm. has actually been a bit easier because yeah. people are more available. Yeah. Uh, well, they all don't have the phone. So I interview people about books, as uh, I was just talking about, or it can be music. Um other art, I cover a lot of um, green issues as well, or try mm -hmm. to, and a lot of animal issues. I talk to um, Ian Senator, who's from Cats Protection in Wickham. I talk to him once a month about uh, the, the cats that they have mm -hmm. available for rehoming. Uh, what else do I talk about? Oh, I, I talk about um, obscure things like sort of healing and uh things like that and alternative things and spiritual things so basically i have a, a wide range of interests and uh, i'm i'm being allowed to indulge all of them on this program so that's that's quite nice and that's not something that's happened before so that's that's quite nice and my previous show was planet claire which was actually called Planet Claire, well, first of all, it's a song by the B-52s, mm -hmm. so that, okay. that helped. So I could use that in the theme tune. And um, it was basically so I could talk about anything. Yeah, that, yeah. that was really where that title came from, so I could get people in talking about anything weird and wonderful or not. But I, I, like, I like to talk to people who maybe don't get talked to or don't get exposure on... on media as much so but uh, but i like to talk to local people as as much as i can so i like um supporting local ethical businesses and vegan businesses because of course that's another big issue um so yes any any local businesses i like to support as well if as long as they're they're ethical so i've had um uh, a lady who makes recycled clothes out of out of mm -hmm. um, recycled denim um, and an ethical candles company 
Um, what else have I had recently? Uh, oh, now I can't remember. Yeah, well, I've had the clothes and I've, I've had the candles. So any sort of ethical business. And I'm trying to get a local company that does vegan pick and mix. Ooh. But people, which is really nice because I've had two bags of it, but um, I think they're avoiding me. <laughs> <laughs> that where, sometimes happens. Where, where, where can I find them? Because I'm pretty sold on vegan pick and mix. They are called, oh, now, they are called um, Sweet Vegan Treat. They're in Marlow. Um, so, yes, and they have, a, they don't, it's not just pick and mix, it's other um, sweets as well, but, uh, yeah, which are very nice. Excellent. Um, and I, I actually wanted to talk a little bit about veganism with you. I mean, mm. and, and also, because, I, I mean, you've talked to, uh, you, you chat to the guys behind Bosch, didn't you? They were guests on your show I I did. at some point. Mm. Um, so, I mean, do you have, uh, like, a favourite Bosch recipe or even just a favourite vegan-y recipe in general? My favourite recipe is basically just chucking everything in and, and hoping it turns out all right. Um, my favourite Bosch recipe is probably the, the current chocolate cake they have available in the supermarkets, which is, which is really nice. Oh, I it's, uh, I well, yeah, that, and they've so got I a lemon one. I, I saw they did, um, they did some uh, cheese and onion with um, uh, one of the nice crisp companies. I can't remember. It was like... Uh, Kettle. That was it, Kettle yeah. chips. Yeah, those are quite good, mm. actually. It's just unbelievable because, mm. I mean, even two years ago, you couldn't do that. And 10 years ago, that would have been a complete dream that you'd, you'd ever, unless it was something like a really, really heavy fruit cake. Yeah, yeah. But to be able to get a chocolate cake, which people who aren't vegans would like. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah. How did you get into radio in the first mm. place? I seem to remember that, because this is going back a long time now, um, I seem to remember that I used to read Cosmopolitan magazine. Mm -hmm. Now, this isn't the answer you were expecting. Uh, I used to read Cosmopolitan magazine, radio workshop in London, and this would have been about 1986 or seven, probably, yeah, about then. And I went to that. Now, why I went to that, I don't know. Uh, so the, the interest must have always been there. I went to that, and I can't remember much about it, but I do remember that we all got to go behind the microphone. And I really liked it. And I, I, re I, I instantly um, felt at home there. And that's where that started, I, I think. And then I sort of thought, well, what, what can I do now? And uh, I found out about hospital radio. So I lived in Aylesbury. No, I didn't. I lived in Tring. Right. I lived in Tring, but <laughs> not very far away. I live in Aylesbury now. Um, and Stoke Mandeville being the nearest hospital, yeah. I contacted um, Stoke Mandeville Hospital Radio and started volunteering there, which was huge fun, um, but also very nerve-wracking. I actually found that more nerve-wracking than, for some reason, um, I found that more nerve-wracking than anything else I've ever done. And this was about 1988, 87, 88. Um, so it was old records oh, and, and, oh, yes, and queuing them up on the turntable. So, yeah, so it was much more difficult. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that's an art in itself. I can, I can tell you, learning, learning how to do that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed it. I mean, you'd have a, you, you'd go around the wards first of all, collecting the requests, which um, tended to be an interesting mixture yeah. of what was currently in the charts and Jim Reeves and Harry Seacombe and, and classical. I mean, you know, you, you, the variety of music you play on you, or or in, de in those days played on hospital radio, you definitely wouldn't get it anywhere else because it could be anything. Or, was, or if you, have you got some nice jazz? Okay, well, we'll play that as well then, yeah. uh, alongside the Jim Reese, the Harry Seeker, the current number one, whatever that was, and the classical. So, yeah, it was an interesting variety of stuff, but I, I, I did enjoy it. Um, so... From um, then, I worked for actually. I did this some of this at the same time. I worked for the cable radio station in Milton Keynes, which I think is still there, um, which is called CRMK. Um, 
I did that, and that was on, like a lot of radio stations. That was on an industrial estate because it was around the back of Horizon, which was the independent radio station in Milton Keynes at the time. Um, so I did that for a while, and since then, I've done a variety of all sorts of strange things, um, strange sort of um, RSLs, restricted service license. I worked for the Action Desk at BBC Radio Oxford. That was that was that's also an interesting experience. Yeah, yeah lo- lots of lots of sort of one-off things and things that and doing one show for um radio christmas that was one um yeah that was i did radio christmas in london in free and barnet in a psychiatric hospital which was in the process of closing but hadn't quite closed it was one of those very old imposing psychiatric hospitals with like the rubber bits on the doors and very very high doors yeah. and um that was that was a very strange experience and i did that every that was about 90 that was christmas 92 and i did the mid morning show every day whilst working full time in aylesbury so um i was a bit tired at the end of yeah, that i can imagine yeah how long did you, how long how long did you do that for that was for a month. Okay, that was for yeah. a month because it was, it was it was Radio Christmas, which I think still they do one in Amersham. But yeah. it was it was a I think more popular then. That it was just radio stations used to run around the country um, to raise money uh, for various charities in the run up to Christmas. Yeah. You're listening to The Archer on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. I'm currently in conversation with Claire Sherman and we're chatting about presenting on the radio. And this is a track by local artist Maz Manzini and I'm probably going to butcher the uh, pronunciation here. It is Racconti di Tungolano. Did I get that right? Maz, drop me an email and let me know if I got that right. This is Wickham Sound. You're listening to The Art Show on Wickham Sound. That was Maz Manzini. And we're here in conversation with Claire Sherman, who is a presenter on Wickham Sound and a good friend of mine. So uh, over to Claire. I want to kind of follow up with, you know, you said when you got started and you were working in hospital radio and, you you know, you're um, working with um, proper records and stuff. I have a few Mm. questions. First of all, like, how, how, how did requests even work when presumably you've only got a sort of a certain number of records so um because i mean i suppose now if, well, somebody, if somebody calls into a radio show now you can mm-hmm. you know you've got a million songs at your at your fingertips um well we could play something if they, people someone else something really really obscure we play something oh this is similar yeah. even if it wasn't yeah okay, um yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think we generally i think there was now it was was it called yeah in Aylesbury there was a shop called Record House, mm-hmm. which was a um, a really good um, record shop, and I think they gave us a top ten. Oh okay. Yeah. Um, so we had so we'd we'd have 
we, we'd have whatever people had seen on top of the pop. So we'd have that. Um, we had quite an extensive library, actually, because uh, people would donate things. Yeah. Um, so, and quite, and a lot of the same things yeah, were so, asked yeah. for every week. I'm pretty certain the most popular request was Harry Seacombe and the Old Rugged Cross. Yeah. Pretty certain that that would have been it. Um, so we had most of them, um, and if we didn't, we'd we'd play something similar, whether it, um, you know, whether it was or not. I mean, we might if it was something we'd never heard of, we wouldn't even know if it was yeah, similar yeah. because we couldn't Google it. So, yeah. but yeah, we managed. I, we managed. I, I mean, I suppose as well. But the part of the the point is more really f to kind of give people a little shout out and stuff and lift their spirits exactly. and whatnot so it's probably just you know they'll they'll take it as long as you say that say their name i suppose funny you mentioned yeah. uh harry seacombe as well because he's everywhere in every charity shop vinyl stack you'll find about <laughs> 10 of him <laughs> it's not funny it must be coming from all the old hospitals <laughs> well it, well actually it could be because i think hospital radio it, the ones that still exist mm -hmm. i think they're all pretty high tech as well yeah, yeah. so they're not playing records any longer mm. so that could be where they're coming from and um probably house clearance as yeah, well yeah, is yeah. where they're coming from yeah, yeah. try not to think but, about it too much <laughs> no the other thing i wanted to mention was we we're talking about records and and you just mentioned obviously they're a lot more high tech now and mm. um, you know the text changed from when you first got into radio um, do you think it's got easier or more difficult? And you know, do you need to be techy to work in radio, or is it something you can sort of pick up as you go? Well, I'm not very techy. I, th I think it's quite easy. I, I think I would say it's got easier. Yeah. Actually, um, when, I, when I think about playing the records and how difficult it was to, to cue them up, um, because if you didn't, if you didn't wind the record back exactly the right amount it would go whoop when when you started it so or there'd be a long pause if you'd got, yeah. if you'd wound it back too far so because you don't have to do that and also you wouldn't have you wouldn't be able to see the time of things mm -hmm. either because of course you've got it counting down now so i would say i mean it's it's more techy um but i would say it's easier i mean basically all you're doing is pressing a button saying go really i mean it can it can go horribly wrong anything with computers does yeah. um and if it if something goes horribly wrong generally i don't know what to do yeah. so i'm i'm fine so long as everything's everything's working um and i think you can make it very techy but it doesn't it, i mean it, i think some shows on wickham sound are quite techy i'm definitely not yeah. techy at all um so no you don't have to be it, i think it just depends what you want to do really yeah yeah that makes sense i mean it's funny you, you kind of answered one of the questions i was thinking of which is because it's one i've thought about as well it's like what what do you how do you react when something goes wrong when you, when you're on air like what's what's your strategy if something does start to go wrong panic panic <laughs> um I just... I suppose you you uh, keeping going yeah. actually I think I think that's it, that's it. I mean sometimes if something goes wrong technically it can be out of your hands yeah. actually. Um but um if if something if something does go wrong I guess you have to keep going. I mean I think people always say you're not meant to mention it. Yeah. Um if something goes wrong I tend to mention it if something yeah <laughs> um but maybe not go on about it too much i i guess all you can do is think well you know it's it's radio and it's not a life and death situation it's it doesn't matter that much if something goes wrong i don't think i've ever had anything go hideously yeah, yeah. wrong uh, and also it's live as well so to a certain extent it, uh, you know people you know you, you'd hope people you are kind i suppose <laughs> i mean that I, I think I mean, it depends what you mean by things going wrong. Mm. Well, technically, you can't do a lot about, um, except try and put it right. If it's things going wrong, if it's a guest that goes wrong, yeah. <laughs> so if they, Could if they um, can get rid of them, <laughs> I, well, fortunately, that hasn't happened yeah. <laughs> yet. Um, so, yeah, I've not, I've not had a 
guests get really angry and yeah. storm out or swear or um, any of those things that could happen. But if that did happen, I guess all you can do is apologize and move on. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's all you can do. I guess there's no there's no, no point in getting upset about it yeah, because yeah. it's radio. Yeah. That's yeah. it. And also, yeah. about, you know, it, it's happened as well. So it's kind of, as you say, it's kind of like, right, you've just got to keep that momentum going. Um, yeah. You know, even if it, I don't know, even if it is a guest that goes haywire or something, you know, you've got to try, <laughs> you've got to try and kind of bring the show back in. And same again, if it's a tech issue, it's like, well, we just got to find some way to deal with it or, you know, I don't know, keep talking until you can figure out a yeah. fix or something like that. Um, and I, so I wanted to, to ask as well, like, um, Obviously, you've had to adapt. I mean, we all we've all had to adapt into into lockdown as well. But what have been some of the challenges of that? I mean, I suppose one highlight, as you say, is that it's actually been easier to to get hold mm. of people to appear on the shows. But you know, there are obviously a lot of challenges as well. Well, the main challenge was I couldn't get online for about the first three or four weeks, um, and I needed to get I needed to get a new. What did I need to get? I needed to get something. Oh yes, I couldn't plug my microphone into the side of my laptop. Yeah. So I needed to get an adapter. Then I couldn't download the right software and I, it, it took forever to to get everything sorted out. But eventually I did. Um, so that was the main challenge. The main challenge was, was getting all of the, the tech in yeah. place, really. Um, and it feels a bit strange. It does. Uh, it does feel quite strange. I mean, if you look at the pictures, some of the presenters do have really fabulous studios, yes. and also because um, the, the way it works, I can't hear myself in the headphones, which right. you can in the studio, which I actually thought would put me off more than it does. Because when I'm in the studio, if I can't hear myself in the headphones, I know something's gone wrong. Yeah. But yeah. I guess because I know. I'm not. In fact, when I can hear myself in the headphones, it means something's gone wrong. Yeah. It's the other way round. So it's it's very strange because, it, as you say, it doesn't feel like radio. Well, I think even in the studio as well, and especially for mm. for now, you're doing the afternoon shows. You know, if you were presenting from the studio, there'd be a buzz around because normally there'd be people exactly. outside. It would be nice to go back to the studio um, and see it again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> To see if it's, still, see if it's there. still there, yeah. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, so yeah, so the main the main challenge was getting it all set up in the first place. It does have a tendency to suddenly lose connection, so that's one of those panic moments. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's happened a few times, cool. but um, it's just nice to be able to still be able to do it. Really, yeah, that's it. Yeah, and I mean, I suppose as well, um, especially something like Wickham Sound, which is a, a, a local station, is it's, it's quite mm. a valuable service to to provide you know it's like hopefully helping to keep people's morale up and keeping people switched on to you know what's going on in the community even when when we are all sort of you know st stuck at home in our own little bubbles well that was one of the reasons why i was frustrated that i, c I couldn't get on air for mm. the first few weeks because i thought it, it is a very useful and and important service that uh wickham sounds mm. providing because it's it's one it's providing company for people yeah. and cheering people up and it's also providing vital information yeah. for people as well and promoting some of the things that are happening locally to actually support people during this time so i was very frustrated that i couldn't be involved yeah. with that but uh, it all resolved in the end but yes uh, i think radio sort of comes into its own during times like this yeah yeah i mean i suppose the same is true of sort of any communication medium really but i i think as well because of it being a local thing uh yes. you know how you were talking about um uh some of the you know some of the people that you've you've um spoken to and some of the you know the products they make and stuff and again mm. a time like this is the perfect time to be shopping from you know independent people like ethically ethically traded goods and this kind of thing instead of you know i guess sticking to the status quo and just buying everything from a multinational corporation Exactly. I mean, it certainly is, is at the time. It's always a time, but yeah. it's especially the time now to be supporting local companies. And of course, some of them have been hit quite badly yeah, yeah. Uh, by by the pandemic. So yes, it certainly is. It's important important to promote them, definitely. 
Cool. And uh, just one last question to end on, and it's I don't, it's kind of easier when I'm sort of asking musicians and stuff, I suppose. But um, uh, just sort of what are you what are you planning next? What have you got uh, lined up next? <laughs> I've just keeping going on with yeah. some sound and seeing seeing. I mean, uh, it's difficult to plan anything at the yes, moment. Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so just just keeping going, getting some more good guests on. Definitely having you on once a month. Yeah, I've uh, definitely got, I've got carrying on with that. And finding more in, more interesting guests. I mean, it's a shame. I mean, I, as I, as I was saying, I've, um, some guests have been easier to talk yeah. to, but then I was go, planning to talk to some people who were going to be. Uh, I, I talked to people, um, authors who mm-hmm. do um, events for Chorleywood Bookshop. Of course, they've all been cancelled. Yeah, yeah. I was going to talk to a couple of people who were going to be um, at the theatre at the Wickham mm-hmm. Swan. That's been cancelled too, so it'd be nice to to get that to talking to those yeah. people as well. Uh, I mean, one of them was was Beck Hill, who's um, I don't know if you've seen her, but she does. Uh, she's a comedian and an artist, and she does fabulous flip charts in connection in um, along to songs. Right, uh, you need to Google her. I, I know, she's I know the name. Good. I know the name. Yeah. It's bugging me because I'm like, why do I? Why, where from? But uh, yeah, I have to give her give her a Google. Yeah, you should do. She's very good. I was going to talk to her, but um, the show's been rescheduled, so let's hope that goes ahead. You're listening to The Art Show on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. My name's Dane Cobain. I've just been in conversation with fellow presenter Claire Sherman, and uh, this is Ant Barnes. He's a local High Wickham musician, cover artist, guitarist. He actually does a lot of private events as well, so if you're looking for someone at a wedding or something, um, obviously, once all of the current madness is out of the way, definitely reach out to Ant. And this is one of his originals called When the Seas Leave Our Shores.
Love music, love talk, love Wickham Sound. From the 1st of April, your new Buckinghamshire Council will replace the existing county and district councils and continue to deliver all the services you are used to. Visit buckinghamshire.gov.uk. We understand that everyday life is going to become challenging over the next few weeks and months, but we want to reassure you that the Wickham Sound team are here to inspire and entertain you with local, relevant programmes and information. We followed government advice and set our team up to work remotely. We have taken all the steps we can to keep our team safe so we can be here for you. Local businesses. Perhaps you have closed temporarily or have found a new and innovative way of working. If you want to reach customers with your message, get in touch with us today. We can get through this if we all pull together. Please stay at home. Stay tuned to Wickham Sound for the latest information and do get in touch with us to let us know how you're doing, if you'd like a song played or just want us to say hello to you. This is Wickham Sound. That was Ant Barnes with When the Seas Leave Our Shores. You're listening to The Art Show on 106.6 FM at Wickham Sound and we're at that point of the show where I share some sort of entertainment content to keep you going until uh, the next week so each week we share a book a tv show or a movie and an album to keep you going as well so uh for the book i guess i'm going to recommend uh, what i'm currently reading which is we can remember it for you wholesale by philip k dick it's basically his collected short stories he's the guy behind the short stories that inspired blade runner and minority report and various other things classic sci-fi writer his work's quite pulpy, so he's not necessarily like high literature, but there are always some like fun ideas that he plays with. And um, bearing in mind it's a short story collection, I tend to find those are quite hit and miss, uh, whereas this one I've enjoyed most of the stories. I can remember most of them as well, which isn't always the case. Now I should mention here, this is uh, edition number five in his collected short stories. So there are five different collections in total. For some reason, numbers two and five are both called We Can Remember It For You Wholesale. So I guess that that story appears in both of them. Funnily enough, that one itself was then later adapted into a total recall as well. So if I guess if you're a fan of any of the, the movie adaptations that I've mentioned, it's definitely one worth uh, checking out. But yeah, because it's quite a big chunky book, about 480 pages, it's also one of those where you can just read a story a night, you know? And I want to read this out, actually, because I thought this was really cool. This was the introduction to it, and it's a quote from Philip K. Dick in an interview that he gave, you know, before his death. Be weird if he did it after his death. So he said, uh, how does one fashion a book of resistance, a book of truth in an empire of falsehood, or a book of rectitude in an empire of vicious lies? How does one do this right in front of the enemy? Not through the old-fashioned ways of writing while you're in the bathroom, but how does one do that in a truly future technological state? Is it possible for freedom and independence to arise in new ways under new conditions? That is, will new tyrannies abolish these protests? Or will there be new responses by the spirit that we can't anticipate? And that was from an interview in 1974. This book was then published in the early 90s, uh, 1991. Oh no, sorry, 1990. And uh, it's still just as relevant today in 2020. And I think that's, you know, the mark of a great writer. For this week's movie or TV show, this could also have been the book, because I'm going for Snowpiercer. Uh, There've been movies of it in the past. But perhaps the more exciting thing is that Netflix has currently got a Netflix original series of it and they're releasing a new episode of it each week. I'm not gonna lie, it's not one for the family. There's uh, basically the the plot of Snowpiercer is that these people are on uh, a thousand and one carriage long train that's like speeding through the freight frozen wastelands of the earth. And um, 
you get like a class war basically so between first class second class and third class and then there are the tailies who are the people on the tail who sort of snuck in to board the train right before it departed and uh, this is actually based on a graphic novel series it was originally called i think le transpierce neige something like that anyway and as you can probably tell from my half-hearted attempt at that it uh, the original was written in french it's their uh, graphic novel so the original graphic novel was written in french and then they did a second one after the original author's death uh, and then they've done a third one with another new author as well um but the the graphic novels are very much worth reading but the tv show is great as well but as i say it's very brutal and there's this sort of frontier justice because they're low on resources on the train and you know a lot of conspiracies about what's really going on and uh, there's a form of punishment where they basically force people to put their arm out of the window of the train and then their arm freezes because of the extreme cold temperatures of the actual earth and uh, and then they sort of bring the arm back in and they you know what? I'm gonna self-censor myself here because I don't even know if I can say what happens on the radio because it's that bad <laughs> but uh bad in a good way you know and uh, definitely i've been enjoying watching it so far there's only three episodes out at the time of recording possibly four now um i don't know because i'm not sure what day they come out so i need to look that up but um there's like already a few episodes enough for you to give it a try and see if it's your taste anyway and for this week's album so there's there's something about rock and roll that i found very comforting I don't know if it's just the music because the music itself is very chill and all the lyrics tend to be about, you know, oh, I'm taking my girl to the prom. You can have that one for free. And um, I don't know, there's just something relaxing about it. And I noticed the other day when I was in um, Tesco that they were playing like 50s, 60s rock and roll and Elvis and stuff over the Tesco speakers. And I'm sure they don't normally do that. And then the next time I went in, they were playing just pop music. So I don't know whether this is like a social experiment. Are they, they trying out whether rock and roll music calms people down? I don't know. I mean, I definitely felt a lot more stressed when I was in there and they were playing uh, modern pop music, which was much more like, I'm going out this weekend. I'm going to a party, uh, which is weird to play in the time of coronavirus anyway, if you ask me. I'm getting off on a bit of a tangent here. But um, yeah, for some reason, I've always found rock and roll just sort of super relaxing and super, uh, super chill. So I've been listening to it a lot when I've been going out on my walks just because, you know, the world's a scary place and it's nice to be ambling along just listening to Buddy Holly and stuff. Uh, I don't know whether this is as well because when I was young, my, my dad used to play in a 50s and 60s cover band. I actually used to go to his gigs and I'd fall asleep in his, uh, he had a little fluffy guitar case. Uh, with like a really soft inside and I'd fall asleep in his guitar case while they were on stage. But um, I've been listening to Dreamboats and Petticoats, which is like a 50s compilation album. There are actually about eight of them now and they've all got like different themes like, I don't know, uh, Dreamboats and Petticoats 6, go into the prom and things like that. But uh, they're definitely worth listening to if you just want some like old school rock and roll, songs that you know but you've probably forgotten about and um, just something nice and chill for when you're, when you're walking along. So I'm going to recommend that this week. So that brings us pretty much to the end of this week's edition of The Art Show on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. My name is Dane Cobain. As always, you can reach out to me on dane.cobain at wickhamsound.org.uk. That's D-A-N-E dot C-O-B-A-I-N at wickhamsound.org.uk. And you can also find The Art Show on Facebook if you ju just search for The Art Show Wickham Sound. You should find us. I am going to leave you until next week when hopefully our guest is going to be Persephone and or the underworld so persephone and the underworld are a sort of three-piece band so we're either going to just have persephone or we're going to have the whole band we'll see i don't know it would be good to get the whole band because their guitarist is sean gillians and he was very nearly my boss at the art center because i was going to go and uh, help run the bar there but then obviously coronavirus happened so yeah we might get the whole band we might just get persephone we'll see but uh, tune in next week to find out and in the meantime i'm going to leave you with one final wickham artist this is The Phenomenots. I'll see you next week. So here's your ultimatum, your cash 22. You can't have it both ways, I won't be with you. I have held this in for far too long. I kept this in my heart I can't remember how
Sound.